Hello and welcome to the Ryan Mack Show. Packed show today. We've got a lot to talk about. This week, this last week, Hunter Biden been convicted. As you know, the previous week, uh, Trump was convicted of 34 felonies. The difference between the two, it should be not even close. we got more of that to come here on the show. We've got Hunter Biden's conviction, the narrative out there, the media. Don't give up the media narrative. Don't let that go. This is not even close to the same thing as the Trump uh, conviction. This doesn't mean that you get, they get a fair pass and that they can go after Trump now because they've got their guy. Not even close. Then we've got the, the laptop. You know, the famous laptop, Hunter Biden's laptop that said it wasn't real. It was Russian disinformation. Well, they presented it during the trial, and we came out two years ago and said it was real too. Got more on that. Um, Hunter Biden's baby mama also had a huge testimony part of that trial as well. We've also got uh, churches going woke. You have the uh, allegations by the House Republicans that Merrick Garland has been held in contempt. We'll get more on that. And we've got European far-right elections being won, far-right elect officials winning, according to the left, elections across the, uh, the globe, meaning the grassroots movement towards more conservative policies and, and candidates in general are gaining steam and the the left and the socialists are losing ground and they're pissed so we got more on that also the justice department gave their response um to the supreme court case this week uh, and the left blew up their minds well I'll get more on that this is the ryan mack show welcome this is from the rumble studio live saturdays at 4 p.m to roughly about an hour all right so let's get into this now it's Father's Day's weekend coming up tomorrow, Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all you great fathers out there. I can't think of maybe one really great father who was so proud of his son that he couldn't wait to tell the world on a stage. He was at the G7 Summit. Joe Biden, of course, was so proud of Hunter, even after his conviction. You have a cocaine addicted son. You have a, a person who cheated on his brother's ex widow with a hooker and a stripper and got her knocked up. What could be more proud of being proud of than as his father than having a son like that? Well, here is Joe Biden telling you <laughs> it's how proud he is. So there you have it. You have Joe being proud of his son Hunter for simply being a crackhead and a deadbeat. And now he's got three felony convictions. But there's a narrative out there. So let's first break into the story. All right, so Hunter Biden uh, lies on a federal background check. Now, if you or I lied on a federal background check, that would have been handled probably three or four days after the background check came back. But if you're the president's son and the vice president's son of the time, why would you have to worry about it, right? This was 2018. 2018, it took the Justice Department to hold a special counsel appointee in six years of investigating, lying on a background check on whether or not you took drugs. Okay, there's video evidence on his laptop that he did drugs and cocaine. For years before that, there's actual video evidence of him doing drugs, but he pleaded not guilty and then wanted to go to trial. This Tuesday or last Tuesday, after deliberating for just three hours total, 
The jury convicted Biden on all three felony counts. The first two counts related to making false statements, false statements to the federal ATF form. When he purchased the firearm in October 2018, he claimed on the form that he was not, in fact, a drug addict. He also signed it. The third count relates to possessing a gun. Under federal law, you cannot possess and purchase guns if you are a drug user. Hunter bought the gun on October 12th, 2018, and his former lover, Hallie, who was the widow of Biden's brother, Bo, threw the gun away 11 days later. Now he faces up to 25 years in prison and a fine of 750000 However, unlikely, in most cases, as a first-time offender, will he actually face a maximum sentence. But what's even funnier is that President Biden pledged not to pardon his son, should he be convicted. So he issued a statement, and he sidestepped any guilty verdict entirely. Instead, he focused on Hunter's struggles with and recovery from addiction. I just played the video. He's proud of his son. He's in quote, as I said last week, I'm the president, but I'm also a dad. Jill and I love our son, and we are so proud of the man he is today. So many families who have loved ones battling addiction understand the feeling of pride seeing someone you love come out on the other side so strong and resilient in recovery. But did he come out on the other side? Is he really clean and sober? That's the question, but he, he's still a scumbag nonetheless. But the Trump campaign also issued a statement extending well wishes for Hunter's continued recovery, characterizing his conviction as a distraction from other crimes his family members have allegedly committed. What did they commit? I don't know. The Biden, higher Biden family enriched themselves with Ukraine and China from tens of millions of dollars. But that's all on the evidence of the laptop that they didn't even bother to bring up. They went after him for a gun background lie. And when they had a treasure trove of tens of millions of dollars of worth of evidence that suggests that Joe Biden was also involved in crimes. But never, never mind that. See, this is what the left does. They convict Trump over 34 felonies, which were stretched because there was no crime being committed. And even the verdict didn't even allege a crime. You didn't even have to state the crime he committed. But you have Hunter, weird, also convicted of three gun felonies that don't relate to anything that his actual family has committed. These are the most obvious crimes that Hunter Biden has committed. And yet the left and the media act like, yep. See, all fair. There's no, there's no bias here in the Justice Department. Guys, don't buy into that narrative. This was still an unfair conviction that Donald Trump faced. 34 fake felony charges. That's what's on display. The media and the leftist media, MSNBC, CNN, CBS, ABC, all of them, they will tell you, well, justice is blind. If they can go after Trump, they can go after Hunter. They got him. Ship shape, turn around, look around. That's not what happened. This is still a a very lopsided Justice Department. Now, another thing with that this trial, you have to understand. The laptop was brought up as evidence. So a while back during, I don't know, 2020, when everybody on the left said the laptop wasn't real and that it was just Russian disinformation, they still can't get it through their heads. The New York Times can still pull out articles, and it still won't admit that Hunter's laptop is real. So the New York Post, this is from the New York Post, facts are stubborn things, John Adams said, not as stubborn as the New York Times. So despite prosecutors, investigative journalists, and forensic evidence analysts all confirming the laptop is the genuine article, the uh, gray lady desperate to tear it down. That's the New York Times. So New York Times and even the, the 51 scumbags, former intelligence officials that said it was still Russian disinformation, it was not. So this article, so far so good. Nope. The latest attack in the article published Wednesday, Hunter Biden's laptop, revealed by New York Post, comes back to haunt him. That's the, the article in the, the New York Post. They posted it at the time the election was happening on, in 2020. And what did you have? You had Twitter run by Jack Dorsey, and you had Zuckerberg destroy the evidence. They blocked the post from being shared because they knew it was, it was disinformation. 
they knew the laptop was real. They did nothing about it. They didn't. It was pure election interference. That's what it comes down to. That's what it was. Then you have Katie Robertson, the dispatch. Many claims about the laptop's contents have not been proven, but it played a role in the prosecution of Mr. Biden over firearm purchase. Many claims. So it gets us up the, uh, the New York Post. You can find it there. So the New York Times still apparently can't let go of it. But remember this? When they said that the laptop wasn't real, President Trump goes on 60 minutes. And you remember Leslie Stahl, the famous, Sir, we can't verify that. We can't show things that have been verified. Really? Because you share things at 60 minutes all the time that can't be verified. But in a 2020 interview, President Trump sits down with Leslie Stahl and she completely tries to stonewall him over the fact that Hunter Biden's laptop at the time of this interview was legit, according to the Justice Department. They had it. And here's the interview. Of course, they know it's a laptop, but they can't figure out if it's real or not. Of course, they knew it was real the whole time. That just goes to show how ignorant and how dumb they are. They, this was pure election interference, and they knew it. They still know it, and they're doing it again in 2024. This conviction, these 91 counts against Trump, is purely the same replay that Democrats do during election season. They will interfere in as many elections as we allow them. Never more important than this one right now. 2024 could very well be our last election. The Democrats do not like to lose, and they don't want to give up their power. You have to vote. When everybody tells you you have to vote, get out and vote. Bring 10 people to the 10 and send 10 emails, and then call 10 people. You have to get people out to vote. This is no longer a right or left issue. This is a this is a good versus evil. This is a saving America issue. This is a tyrannical government, an administrative state out of control. And they will continue to accuse you of what they themselves are doing. So even though it came out that the laptop was real, they still, you have 51 intelligence agencies still not minding their business and not coming out. These 51 individuals, these scumbags. And th that's just true of their covers. Now, also in October 2020, this is credit to Mays Moore on Twitter. You can find it out. Joe Scarborough, one of the biggest idiots on MSNBC, Mika and Joe. He, this, is what he, this is what the left does. They make fun of you for believing the Hunter Biden laptop was real. Remember this? And it, this is what the most profound thing he said. This is what the most profound thing he said, and it made, he treats you like you're idiots if you believe this. This is how the left treats you. And if you need to know anything, know this. This is, remember how they treated you when you said, you know what, this is kind of a big deal. If i known about this, I wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden. That's what you want. That's what they wanted. They wanted you to not know about the laptop because if you knew the contents of the laptop, you wouldn't have probably voted. And that's why so many people are saying, God, why did I, why did I not know this? Here's Joe telling you, you are all idiots and useful tools for the Russians.
Yeah, how stupid we are because the laptop is real, Joe. Maybe it shows how stupid you are for not doing your work as an actual so-called journalist and discovering the laptop contents were in fact real. It just goes to show you how imbecile and how idiotic the left really is. I, I, you can't you can't make this up. You cannot make this up. It, it's unbelievable. But that's not the only thing. When I tell you, don't let go of the narrative because they're going to try to tell you that this is fair game on Trump because they got Hunter now on, a, on an obvious conviction because he lied in a federal background check because he's a scumbag and he's a cokehead and, and he's he's the worst human being on the planet. This is the intelligencer, intelligencer, whatever on the New York side. Don't know if it's left or not, but here's here's the headline. Hunter Biden conviction blows up Republican conspiracy theories. They're right there telling you. This is what it is. This is not some conservative right-wing group. This is what this is. This is what they're aiming for. Hunter Biden conviction blows up Republican conspiracy theory. What is the conspiracy theory, Jonathan says? Hmm. You see right here. Hunter Biden's conviction deliver over a minor charge is significant mainly because it blows up a smithereens the arguments Republicans have made on behalf of Donald Trump. There's the small claim that Trump didn't receive a fair trial, that blue state juries can't render impartial verdicts and famous to famous political figures. Analysts predicted a jury in Delaware on a tiny state where everybody seems to personally know and adore the Biden family would go on, would go easy on a son, but this failed to inspire. No, it didn't fail to transpire. This is what the narrative they want. This is what they want you to believing that don't give in to the Republicans. This is this is fair. See, we got Hunter. They weren't favorable to Hunter, not at all. What what do you mean? You're so stupid. They're they're not biased. They're not left leaning. This isn't a, a an unblind justice department. They wouldn't go after conservatives and not their own. Please, 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 don't give up this narrative. This is not a fair deal, and it, w and it will never be. The DOJ coming after Hunter Biden for a stupid gun charge lying on a background check was not even close to the same thing as what they tried to find on Donald Trump. The convictions are completely opposite. One was obvious. Hunter lied. Doing drugs. He did drugs. He, he bought a gun. You can't make that up. That was a stupid slap on the wrist, essentially. He's not going to face jail time. He'll get off, and he'll probably get his sentence communicated by Biden. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna pardon him. I want chocolate ice cream. That's, that's what this is about. Don't give up that narrative. But it goes on. It's not just the Trumpiest conservatives who believe this. Mainstream conservative pundits routinely assert that the Democrats, not just one Democratic prosecutor, decided to lock up Trump. Four-fifths of Republican voters, according to a recent poll, believe the decisions to prosecute Trump in New York came from the Biden administration, not from prosecutors in New York. Four-fifths? Really? So, so their theory, they say that, which again is the belief held by a supermajority, not just the Glenn Beck audience, you have to believe Biden is directing the, the activities of local prosecutors while exerting no control at all over the Justice Department, the branch of government he presides over. Let's see. Yes, we know that Joe explicitly isn't in charge of local prosecutors because he doesn't even know where he is at the time. And no, you're right. The executive branch doesn't have any say when it comes to local prosecutor decisions. The DOJ oversees some of it. But when it comes to local prosecutors, they kind of have their own thing. But all these DAs in Manhattan, Atlanta, D.C., they're all in deep blue jurisdictions, deep blue judges, deep blue jury pools, people that hate Trump. 95% of those voters will not vote Trump. So how do you expect that Trump got a fair trial again? Would they have the same fate in maybe Mar-a-Lago's jurisdiction? I, I don't know, but I would rather have had to fight for the venue than to, to believe it. But you notice what they said in order for the theory to hold up, you have to understand that Biden is directing the local prosecutors. No, but there was a former federal 
prosecutor in the DOJ, the number three in the DOJ who left the DOJ to go on the local DA of uh, Alvin Bragg, Twinkie's case, and become the lead prosecutor for his team. So, no, no, Biden explicitly wasn't running the local prosecutions, but a number three in the Justice Department was. So that blows up their, their article right there. Another left-wing hack. That goes against the narrative, and it's going to. That You can't let this go. It, it's not going to go away, for one. But two, but that's, that's what they're going to try to push. It's just a Republican conspiracy theory. There is fair and equal justice, just like there was a fair and balanced election, the most secure election in history. A man who couldn't fill a lemonade stand got 81 million votes, but the most secure election you're allowed to talk about. Okay, they were allowed to question 2000's election with Al Gore. They were allowed to question 2016. Funny, the 34 conviction charges they got on felonies for Trump, one of them was a conspiracy to steal the 2016 election. So the same party that is telling you, nope, nothing to see here, most secure election ever, you can't question it, you can't have freedom of speech, we're right, you're wrong, when we win, it's questionable. It's not questionable and fair. Is the same party now saying that Trump conspired to win 2016 because he paid a, a, paid a porn star off to shut up? Do you see what's happening here? They still want to control the narrative. They're in charge. You're not. Sit down. Shut up. That's what this is about. The minute you let them win the messaging and the narrative, the minute you've lost. You, you cannot let them. What's more, there's more testimony in this case that came out. This was from the Post Millennial. The uh, mother of Hunter Biden's daughter, who they won't accept for the family. He has seven grandkids now, Joe does. The uh, estranged daughter, uh, mother, London, explained that she revealed during her time in his inner circle that she witnessed a number of shocking behaviors. Shocking, like what, naked and doing coke off strippers? <laughs> Weird, who knew? It's amazing what you would see in local circles like that. That on at least one occasion, he almost died from a drug overdose. London went on to explain that first the son, he, for the first son kept a stash of it and locked up in the President Biden's Virginia home. And that Hunter often slept with her friends, including most immediately after she told him she was pregnant with their child. But there's nothing to be nothing to be afraid of. Hunter's a great guy. I'm very proud of my son. What's there to be proud of? He's doing cocaine off a stripper's butthole. He's sleeping with his girlfriend's friends, and then after she becomes pregnant too, what is there to be proud of? I don't know. Joe Joe Biden is just as rotten as scummy as his son. So think about this: if this was Trump. And Eric or Don Jr. or Barron were convicted on felony charges. And he had an estranged kid from a stripper after dating a dead brother's widow. Do you think the Democrats would play nice and say, it's a very proud moment for a son, he, for a son and father. He just left his son. You need to stay away from him. No. You know it's not true. The Democrats will be all about calling Trump the racist, Mother effer on the planet, the most scumbag of scumbags, dinosaur. How dare you let Don Jr. snort coke off a stripper's ass? How dare you? You piece of... That's what they would do. That's who these people are. They would head over heels be all about tearing into Trump for what a piece of shit father he is. So because it's Joe... It's just a proud father. He is proud of the strippers that he banged while doing blow on a hotel floor. That's who he is. Now, London's memoir came out. She's got a book, so naturally she's going to tell all. Sure. But why would she have a reason to lie? She's only, I mean, to get back at Hunter and Joe? I don't think it's plausible for her to lie about a situation that, considering his drug abuse wasn't lied about. According to a New York Post review of the memoir, London Roberts was exposed to his drug problems from the moment they met in 2017 at a party hosted by his investment firm, Rosemont Seneca, in D.C. 
She first saw him shortly after arriving with a friend who invited her. He was by himself, wearing his only boxers. Imagine that. This guy's a scumbag. Don't think for a second that the Justice Department suddenly got it fair by going after Hunter, too. It was a slam dunk. Of course they have to, because they were forced into it. This wasn't going to go away. What's worse, not long after they began sleeping together, sometime Hunter was seen, still seeing his late brother's widow after breaking things off with his first wife, uh, Kathleen. London eventually introduced him to a group of her friends she called the Amoeba, with whom he also had sex at fancy hotels. So she was a part of this. Over the next year, London witnessed him twerking on stripper poles, constantly purchasing and using drugs. She maintained that he was still a kind person. What kind person twerks on a stripper pole and, and sleeping with random strangers that he knows are friends of hers? Who does that? I, I don't understand. I, I, I have no words. But this is what they are. This is who they are. This is exactly who these people are. They do not care. But Joe, he's just he's just a proud father. I don't understand. All right, moving on. We've got the household Merrick Garland, Attorney General Merrick Garland, in contempt of Congress. Now, this is mostly symbolic because... Well, I, I have some beef here with this because whenever the House of Representatives vote to hold anybody contempt, it generally goes unnoticed. Oh, unless you're conservative. Remember Steve Bannon? Yeah, war room guy and, you know, in the Trump administration. He's going to j prison July 1st for the same exact charge of being held in contempt of Congress. So he's going to prison, but Merrick Garland still gets to run the Justice Department although defying an investigation the House is doing. So let's get into it. This is from The Blaze. I need 20, uh, 216 to 207 vote. The House of Representatives voted to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress. It was almost right down the middle. It was, I think, one Republican voted against it, but it was on party line. Um, and he made some stupid... In good conscience, I could not support a resolution. Okay, that would politicize our judicial system to score political points. You're a hack. Who, who cares? House Speaker said in a statement today, the House took a significant step in maintaining the integrity of our oversight process. The problem is, a, Attorney General Garland is not going to jail either. And so they're going to have to hold a more authoritative process. This is just speakership talk for he's being held in contempt, but he's not really going to face any accounting. I mean, he's not going to face any judgment for this. It's more merely like a, hey, we're doing something without really doing anything for it. That's what this is. So he gets held in contempt. I want to see him being held. I want to see him being held accountable for, for not giving the audio tapes. It's up to Congress, not the executive branch, to determine what materials it needs. And according to the investigative process, he's not turning over audio from the special counsel's investigation to determine whether to prosecute Biden for clear violation of the law. And the committee needs the audio tapes to verify the accuracy of the written transcripts given to the White House, which is also known to heavily edit. So they need the audio. That's what this is. Again, I don't think he'll see any time whatsoever. This is a symbolic gesture. This is a let's do something to, to not do something kind of thing. But I don't know if it really actually holds any teeth. You like to think it does, but I don't think it will. So we'll just we'll just see. All right, so I'm going to take a quick break here and talk to you about uh, blackout coffee. If you've never had blackout coffee, you need, to, you need to try it. Stay away from the the woke companies that make your coffee and sit on sh uh, shelves at the week at, for weeks on end. Terrible, and it's garbage. It, it's bland. It's just okay. I'm, it's just, it's fine. I mean, I've had Folgers. I've had, I've had, yeah, it's brown water, essentially. Black Hawk Coffee Company is a real American company. And if you like bold, rich, fresh cup of coffee, I mean, the freshest, 
they ship it right after they brew it. So you know it's good. And they're an American company who cares about, of course, America and the freedoms that we endure. And they also give proceeds to troops overseas. They give coffee overseas to troops. They're a true American company. They, they stand for small business entrepreneurship. It's great coffee. Not just, it's not woke. It's not weak. It's not bitter. It's great coffee. Blackoutcoffee.com. Use promo code RyanM10. Save on your first order 10% off. Blackoutcoffee.com. Promo code RyanM10. Save on your first order. All right. So now we have uh, some cultural stuff I want to get into before we got a few more things. A big news about the Supreme Court decisions later, too. DPB on his show, Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can catch us four to five. We get into some of the, the culture things and uh, the big things we talk about is the church, the falling of the church. Now we can all agree that we have our standings and we have our beliefs and we believe in God and he is, he is a just God. He will see things through on a level playing field, whether we are up or down, left or right. But one thing has been true to nature. When the church falls, that's when a society falls. And when you have this, era that we're in where DEI has taken hold of just about everything in our society, diversity, equity, inclusion, where equal outcomes takes the place of equal opportunities. What you enrich yourself with is taken away and given to somebody else who doesn't work at all for it. You have hires by companies for their skin color or who they sleep with instead of their qualifications for the job or their merit or their character. Um, You have the LGBTQ plus I a dipshit all over the place. And the true people that have come out of those into faith, give their testimonies. You have these wackos that maybe they aren't gay, but now they throw the rainbow in your face. You have basically social justice warriors stepping out and throwing, by the way, this is pride month. If if you didn't know and weren't aware and living on a rock, you would know that you were in the middle of, you know, an everyday battle because they're so oppressed that they are everywhere in our society. But when the church falls, the nation falls. There are five Christian denominations that have embraced the LGBTQ plus identity, and they've taken on the progressive mob. So this is from the blaze. Also, the United Methodist Church, I don't know if you're aware, they've lost uh, one million members overnight on their way to losing a million and a half, another million and a half in the coming weeks. So earlier in May, the uh, Methodist Church has been under scrutiny of the progressive mob for years for making, making, to make one of its biggest concessions to date at the, the General Conference in Charlotte. They voted to allow LGBTQ practicing clergy and reverse their ban on same sex marriage. Now, if you've known the history of the Methodist Church, the the conglomerate of the church, they've got the core tenet of traditional values. You know, come one, come all, you know, they'll invite everybody. But in in practicing leadership roles, no same-sex clergy, no same-sex marriage acceptance, right? But the leaders of the uh, United Methodist Church of Ivory Coast saw this was the straw that broke the camel's back. They voted to withdraw the, from the United Methodist Church. And a lot of churches are coming out of that global reach because of their new stance on the LGBT role. And it's devastating because when you start to crumble as a nation, you look to the churches that the nation was mostly built on. If you look at our founding documents, our country was built on God-given rights and our freedoms, and, and a belief in a, in, a, in a God that built core, built this country, a core tenet of this country was built on the belief in God, a freedom of to practice your religion you know, freely without being under the rule of the king, whether you believe Catholicism, Christianity, Protestants, what have you, they, a freedom of religion to express your beliefs. And to see it come under attack is a little alarming. But the pushback, you know, the, this global outreach from the church, is, it's a major blow. They've been losing congregations over the years. Um, and the, the decision to stand up against the pressure from the progressive wing of the church and defend its core values is, is a big reflection on the, over the other churches in the United Methodist Church. 
So the 1.5 million member strong Korean Methodist Church may also be coming out of the United Methodist Church. So more members of and more churches are leaving group of churches. They're not staying with the United Methodist Church, the, the, the global network, because their values. They're not upholding the traditional values of the church. We, we allow and open arms people of all walks, right? We are a broken set of people going into church. You can be, you know, living holy all your life, but there are some aspects of everybody. We are, there was only one perfect being and he was, he was Christ and, and God. But as far as leadership, there was a core tenet of a church where same-sex leadership could not be a thing, and they would not accept same-sex marriage. That's a core tenet of these of the church. But you have a pushback of the denomination. So here are five examples of denominations that have embraced the pride movement. United Methodist Church was the biggest one so far. The chargeable offense for clergy being found to be self-avowed practicing homosexual or presiding at a same-sex marriage or union ceremony was deleted. So the offenses, the chargeable offenses for clergy. So if you were openly gay clergy or secretly gay and you were a clergyman, you were prosecuted if you found out. Well, now they've deleted that clause in the Methodist Church. Presbyterian Church of the United States apologizes for the church's previous unwelcoming stance. LGBTQ parishioners celebrates LGBTQ church pioneers. The, the states that church will welcome, lift up, and fight for the human rights of all people created in the eyes of God. Overture 1113, which I guess is part of their bylaws, on celebrating the gifts of people of diverse sexual orientations and gender identities in the life of the church. Guys, the church is starting to fall, and that's a problem. When you have denominations that are a global network of the churches that branch out of these, openly saying, yep, come one, come all, we will destroy the narrative that unwelcoming we are, and we'll lift up everybody, gender diverse identities. There's one core tenet of the Bible and God created, and God's creation. God created man. Man was lonely. God created woman from man. God created men and women to be together, just fruitful and be multiply. But it didn't create Adam and Steve. It was Adam and Eve. Just, just a clarification that that's where we're at. You have the Episcopal Church, the uh, ordination, and the offices of bishop, priest, and deacon are all open without discrimination. Lay people and clergy cooperate as leaders at all levels of our church. Leadership is a gift from God, and it can be expressed by all people in our church regardless of gender, sexual orientation, and gender identity or expression. That goes to the exact opposite of, of these churches. There's a core tenet. You welcome all as a church body, but in traditional church leadership capacity, they held true to their core tenet was same sex and gender identity was not a thing. It's not a thing for marriage. Marriage was a covenant between man and woman, and you were a man or a woman. That was the that was the truth. That's the biblical truth that God amassed for us. Animals are not gay. They are not queer. They are not transsexual. They are not built for that. No longer can the, does this narrative stand. But you're seeing it. The United Church of Christ. LGBTQIA plus siblings know intimately the nature of being deemed an outcast. The clarion call for LGBTQ plus IA element OP advocacy is rever rever reverberating from state capitol rotundas, family dinner tables, streets, city streets, and church pews. So it's part of their Love is Louder campaign. Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, they too have embraced the LGBTQ identity. We give thanks for the gifts, wisdom, and leadership and faith of our LGBTQ plus neighbors, and as siblings in Christ. We ask the Spirit to embolden us in advocating our social, institutional, legislative change that reflects justice, total inclusion, and God's boundless love for humanity and all of its diversity. There's that D word again, diversity. Since when has churches cared about diversity? As far as a core tenet, they're going to be a diverse body of people under Christ. But this is where the leadership of the churches globally have, have fallen. They've embraced the idea that God's truth is no longer okay, but they twist it. Total inclusion and God's boundless love for humanity and all its diversity. It's true. God created a diverse set of people. He also created a diverse set of people to love 
only two kinds of people, man and woman. Men, women, marry each other. That is it. That's where we're at. That, that's how you stay as a church. That's how you stay core beliefs and not united in that belief. You start straying from your core tenets, and that's when you start straying as a church. That's, that's where you're at. You're a broken church. This is where we're at in society. This is where we are. We got a comment. Yep, the concept that Joe Biden is a great father is laughable. Yep. Good stuff. Yes, he is, he is laughable. So in a, in a mid-segue, so the church is falling, and that's where we're at. That, that's where I'll leave that. But it's you have to – if your church is afraid – of speaking out against the the brokenness of the world and brokenness of the LGBTQ and, and the sexual brokenness overall, then you're not at the right church. If you're a pastor, if you're a youth leader, if your elders or whatever your core structure of your church is openly supporting any of these ideologies, then you need to pick a different church. And there are plenty of churches that will uphold God's truth, and you need to find one. All right. Got a few more stories, but first, <laughs> I can't get this one, let this one go. Here is uh, Joe Biden doing his best stray dog, stray cat. And so he was in Italy now. He went with France last week. <laughs> and this is him in Italy. I'll share the screen here. This is him in Italy. Not knowing where the hell he's going. Oh, you see these. So, to put this in perspective. What's going on here? Joe Biden takes the G7 summit, whatever it is, and they're going to Italy right now with the president, of Italy, the president of France, and uh, uh, Trudeau, little Trudeau over there. So you take a jet across the pond. You take another jet, drop parachutes out in the name of climate change. That's what this is. So here he is. I don't think there's any sound. They're all clapping. Yes, yes. Great job for landing, and he's going, Joe, 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 where'd you go? Where'd you go? And Macron's going, yeah, I had to, I had to do it last week, so your turn. But <laughs> the hell is he going? <laughs> Where was he going? Good Lord. All right. Um, I was going to do one or the other. Let's, let's do this. The... Um, Far right election winning. I'll go there. So if you if you haven't heard from Glenn Beck or any of the other shows this week, there this year in general, there's a lot of elections, and there could be some big gains by the WEF, the World Economic Forum, the WHO, the, the World Health Organization, and the elites. They see this as an opportunity to grow their weeds and spread their uh, domination of a one world government, you know, one global unit. And there's a real opportunity for conservatives to push back. And according to the Washington Examiner, they have. And European far-right issues issuing a uh, stinging rebuke to elites. So what happened? Well, uh, in Europe, I don't know how often, I don't know anything about European elections. I don't know how often you can request an election in Europe. But here we go. Uh, the far-right is making big gains in Europe elections. This is the AP headline from last week. Uh, they have a union parliament um, and... The the article is basically the lead sentence in the AP was that far right and the lead sentence article notes the EU has roots in the de in the defeat of Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. So there there's that headline. So it's a reminder of a sharp rise in Nazi Party percentages in Weimar Republic elections from three percent in 1928 to 18 percent in 1930, 33 percent, 37, and so on. It's getting bigger. So fascist dictatorship is on the rise in Europe once again. No, that's not true. It happened either. European voters don't usually take parliament elections seriously. And the best way I can explain it is that uh, France held an election and that uh, the far right party or the, the conservative wing of France overwhelmingly chose to vote more conservative and not Macron and their allegiance to the parliament. Is the best way I can understand it is that they voted for the EU thing, and it's kind of confusing. But Parliament can only amend or veto legislation passed by non-elected European Commission, and thus 
is just a, a talking stop. It's not really, they don't really have a whole lot of teeth in their elections, I guess. I don't know, but um, turnout in the EU elections has been low in national elections. And in some countries, they just cast votes and general knowledge. The winners only have to be limited to a set policy. But the gains for the supposed far right can be easily overstated, naturally. The identity and uh, democracy parties increased from 49 seats to 62, and the non-aligned, non all of which is classified so far as far right, which increased from 62 to 102. So it sounds like a huge shift, but far right parties still hold only a small minority in the parliament. So parliament's a huge wing, and conservative don't really play much. It's kind of, it's kind of a weird mix. Anyway, France socialists and leftists are freaking out because the so-called far right wing of these elections have taken on some of these seats. A French conservative party announced an alliance with the um, national rally of Marine Le Pen and 29-year-old Jordan Bardella, and all three of the parties, Germany's coalition running behind the alternative for the uh, German party. It's a snap election maybe in an order as well there. So the European elites who open borders they and they dismiss these worried about the consequences as racist have suffered a, a rebuke. Uh, conservatives around the globe are waking up to the fact that, you know, we don't really like open borders. We don't like terrorism in our countries. We want to uphold our traditions. Uh, we want to know what German tradition and culture is. We want to know what uh, Great Britain culture is. We want to conserve those values, right? So those elections, keep an eye out because it could be it could be a change for good, and it could also go way south when you have a stronghold on the one world, one government kind of rule. So that's all the stuff. I don't know too much about European Parliament, but the, there's a there's a shift conservatively in Europe going on. So let's keep a, let's keep a wire of that. All right. Um, so if you didn't notice, we also have open borders here in America, and despite what Joe Biden and his idiots will tell you. We've got potential terrorists uh, coming over the border un unchecked, and um, that's also a problem. But it, the thing about it is that they, they don't care, and they will tell you they don't care. And they tell you and lie to you that the border is secure, right? The border is secure, which, which we know 10, 15, 20, 30 million people later, it is not secure. But recently... An arrest of allegedly ISIS-linked suspects adds terror fuels to the open border crisis. This from just the news. While authorities, security experts, and conservative border hawks have long warned the ongoing security situation at the border could permit entry of hostile actors. The recent arrest of multiple suspects linked to the Islamic State has reignited those fears. Anytime you have open borders and you have no idea who's coming in and you're not vetting them and you're letting them unchecked, you're going to get people who really want to hurt America. This week, a group of suspects with suspected ties to ISIS were arrested across multiple major American cities, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, and as ABC's New reported. Uh, the individuals in question crossed the southern border last year after originating traveling from Tajikistan. I think it's a made-up country. I don't know. It's next to Tajikistan. I don't know. Uh, the suspects reported really raised no security concerns, nothing to see here upon their initial entry, but authorities have ultimately turned up links to the ISIS group. So there wasn't a dead giveaway warning when they came across the border? I, I, I have no words. All three cities in which the arrest occurred are sanctuary cities. It's not known at this time whether local law enforcement assisted the raids. So over the last few days, ICE has been busy arresting several non-citizens uh, pursuant to immigration authorities. The actions were carried out with close coordination with the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force and the DHS. Uh, so Tajikistan has become a hotbed, apparently, for, of terrorist recruiting. You don't say. It's in the Middle East. Imagine that. Uh, in recent years, and Tajik nationals are among suspects in uh, Moscow. In March, the ones that blew up parts of Moscow. While the arrests have renewed scrutiny on the border situation, the warnings have mounted throughout the administration's tenure. Quote, almost weekly, this is by uh, House Security Committee Chairman Mark Green from Tennessee, 
almost weekly, we are getting reports that someone with terrorist ties or other major, major criminal connections has been released to our country by the Biden administration and allowed them to roam free. It's right there in front of you. Open borders, more terrorists. It's, it's spelled out right for you. So this is, this is just a grand big picture issue of customs and border protection. This is the scope of it. 9.9 million nationwide encounters from fiscal year 2021 through 2024, April. At the Southwest, 9.9 million from fiscal year 2021 through April 2024. Just three years since Biden took over. That figure alone stood at 8.1 over the same period. The Southwest land border. 8.1 8.1 over the same figure, well, just over the Southwest. But has that prompted any more security concerns administration? Nope, you won't find a word about it. You will not find a word about the administration. I'm going to see if I have... Uh, no, I don't have any on the, the border is secure videos. Um, but this is the means of entry. This is what they're they're coming in from... Uh, well, the new Biden's executive order he just signed, it's allowing processing to, to take place at a more alarming rate. They're not stopping the border. They're not going to close it. This is what I uh, I get back to, like the, the narrative. Don't give up the narrative. It's a trap. It's a trap with Hunter Biden and the, the fake justice is fair thing. It's, it's a trap now. The border is not secure. We have terrorists coming over. We have adult single males coming over from countries that are hostile towards us. And that they're rampantly coming in from Afghanistan, Iran, Belarus, China, and Venezuela. <laughs> Countries that hate us. There was an app that they were allowing immigrants to use to come in and circumvent restrictions. Port last year from Homeland Security Council of October drew concern in the light of DHS high rate of granting parole from the hostile nations. Between January 12th, 2023 and September 2023, the app processed 278,000 appointments, roughly 95% security entry into the U.S. via parole. Cerning was the high rates of admission of foreigners from hostile nations, Afghanistan, Iran, Belarus, China, and Venezuela. Imagine that. DHS admitted 94% of the 20,000 Russians made, who made appointments. It further admitted 93% of the 246 Afghans. 97% of the 57,000 Venezuelans and 98% of the Belarusians, 18 Iranians, 88%, 88% of the 36 Chinese, and 82% of the two, two uh, Uzbeks, 2,200 Uzbeks. Secretary Mayorkas should have been impeached. He should be removed from office immediately. He's dereliction of duty. He's abused the CBP-1 app for his quest for open borders. That's what it's been. The numbers are proof in his operation that there's nothing he won't do to slow the response and slow it down. We live in a time where Democrats have become a party of open borders, high crime, and, and poverty for all. That, that's what the, the party platform has become. Um, and it's, it's scary because we don't know what is going to happen because of it. I, I just have no words. All right. Last story I want to get to. Big news at a Second Amendment case. This is from the uh, Daily Signal. In case you haven't heard, June is a month in which the session for the Supreme Court ends and a bunch of these random cases drop. And some of them are big that we've heard. You know, Roe v. Wade dropped before one of their sessions ended. We had an abortion pill case that dropped. Wasn't really a win for the left as much as they say. But uh, it meant that this abortion pill could be bought and sold and, and whatever. It wasn't really safe. It was not banned because of a standing issue in the court case. So it wasn't a major win for the left. However, this Second Amendment case is an advocate win because the Second Amendment, this case wasn't about whether or not you could have a right to own a gun. This was a bump stock case. Now, what a bump stock is, it's an attachment that re- that adjusts the recoil and pushes the recoil pressure down towards your uh, finger adjustment. And you still have to pull the trigger with your finger each time you shoot. It does not make it an automatic weapon. And yet you have Supreme Court justices fully admit that they have no idea how guns work. And I got about a two-minute video of 
be explaining this. This is the Car Garland versus Cargill. They're talking to the, the attorneys in, the, in this case. Sotomayor and others and Gorsuch ask, it's not about, it's not the mechanism. The bump stocks don't make the gun a machine gun and it's not a trigger. It's not, it's not a trigger point. So I have another read from Justice Thomas and his opinion, majority opinion, but listen to them really fully admit that they have no idea how guns work. And this is the, um, the discussion between the justices and the lawyers. My gosh, these three idiots on the the Supreme Court, Kagan, Sotomayor, and Jackson, they have got to be the dumbest individuals. Now, I'm still learning all about guns. I have a few. But a bump stock is merely just a case for the gun to sit in. It attaches to the gun. It does not make, let me get this through your head, liberals, and I have another post too that David Hogg, the super left leftist activist, is whining about it. It does not make the gun a machine gun at all. It doesn't do anything to the trigger at all. You still have one trigger pull, one shot. Yes, the higher rate of those shots, because the pressure isn't in the recoil, you don't have to keep pulling trigger as often. You still have to pull it. Every time you shoot, you have to hit the trigger in a semi-automatic rifle. You have to keep hitting the trigger to shoot. It's not just one trigger pull for 50 shots. As one idiot put, 400 shots a minute now because they, they undid this case. This is, a, is a, a measure of reducing the recoil, putting the pressure back on the individual to still shoot at a much higher rate, but it's still one shot one bullet coming out they completely ruled this incorrectly when they try to put it in place the atf has no business making laws it goes through congress they have to follow the laws bump stocks are not triggers it's not a mechanism in which it makes an automatic weapon democrats and liberals don't seem to understand this case in point 
Here is idiot David Hogg on Twitter. I'll see if I can pull this up and you guys can see it. He, if you don't know who he is, he's a major liberal activist. And see if I can like bring up his post here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but just a reminder: all the awful decisions coming out of the Supreme Court are because of one man, Trump. The overturning of Roe that has been that has enabled abortions, weakening of gun laws, Trump. Don't be an idiot. Don't vote for Trump. Well, David, I hate to tell it to you, but uh, the ATF voted for these rulings. It wasn't Trump. The Supreme Court correctly overturned Roe. That wasn't Trump. Supreme Court, not because of one man. Supreme Court had openings, and the president at the time just so happened to be Donald Trump. Now, another important read is then the majority opinion by Thomas, by Justice Thomas. He is a profound Second Amendment advocate, and he's, he's a constitutionalist when it comes to the Second Amendment. <laughs> he was on fire with this opinion. Congress has long restricted access to machine guns, a category of firearms defined by the ability to, to shoot automatically more than one shot as a single function of the trigger per U.S. code. Semi-automatic firearms, which require shooters to re-engage the trigger for every shot, are not machine guns. This case asks whether a bump stock, an accessory for semi-automatic rifles that allows the shooters to rapidly re-engage the trigger and therefore achieve a high rate of fire, converts the rifle into a machine gun. We hold that it does not and therefore affirm. It is an accessory that endures a high rate of fire, but you still have to fire the gun each time you hold the trigger. It is not about the, the accessory to create a machine gun. It does nothing to the trigger. It does not make the gun fire more rapidly. It does not make the gun fire 400 rounds a minute. These are just stupid idiots. And there's another tweet from Mad Bull America. The Supreme Court makes constitutional decisions I don't like. I just pretend the Constitution doesn't exist. David Hogg. That's who this kid is. He's an idiot. He thinks, and he's not alone, that we'll just go ahead and ignore the Supreme Court. Well, Joe Biden does. Every which way. They, they override him anyway. They don't care. And if you question him, you're a bigot. Just like the Supreme Court case on student loans. They told the Justice Department, told the Biden administration, you can't just forgive student loans. They ignore it. So they'll probably ignore this, but the ATF will shot down with good reasoning. They're getting back to the article that the ATF, which is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, um, has a bad habit of remembering, a bad habit of forgetting it's not a part of the legislative branch. So these alphabet agencies they make rules it's like the epa they make environmental rules and regulations without going through congress congress makes the laws if you're not aware of that then read a history book and read about government these agencies are department heads and bureaucratic agencies unelected individuals they're the regulators of of these rules they enforce the rules written by congress they do not make laws they are not allowed to make laws and you're going to have another Supreme Court case this week, the Chevron case, to determine that you can't make laws. Congress makes the laws, but they continue to make laws. The rule of law and separation of powers, the ATF is also a bit loose on, and they're in a little bit of a losing streak. And it's a 6-3 decision, mostly in party lines, obviously. The more left-leaning idiots in the Supreme Court dissented, and the conservative wing generally, except for Roberts and a couple others, said that, look, Bump stocks is not an accessory that makes it a machine gun. So under federal law, that that's just what it is. The case, Cargill versus Garland, centered around firearms. It didn't involve any arguments whether the Second Amendment protects the right to own a gun or bump stocks. Rather, the question was, is a bump stock device a machine gun in the first place? And so understanding this case requires a bit more background. And one of the most important distinction by regulations is um, that... The possession of the regulations between machine guns, the possession of which is heavily restricted for civilians and semi-automatic firearms, long history of having guns most available by civilians. An AR-15 with a bump stock is not a machine gun. So federal law defines a machine gun as a weapon that shoots automatically more than one shot without manually reloading. 
So a thing, a single function of the trigger means you can shoot as you know as many as it as you need to. A semi-automatic rifle, meanwhile, requires a separate pull each time you shoot. In simple terms, a machine gun and semi-automatic weapon is uh, for the all what must happen for a gun to fire a second bullet. Machine gun, one trigger pull. A simple handgun, semi-automatic, one pull, one bullet. Machine gun, one pull, multiple bullets. That's the difference. In a semi-automatic weapon, the trigger causes the fun gun to fire. Um, in order to fire a second bullet, you must release the trigger so it resets, and it must physically be pulled again. That's, I mean, this is the breakdown of what it is. When you trigger in a machine gun, the weapon will fire continuously until either you release the trigger or the gun runs out of ammunition. Those have been restricted. It doesn't need to be reset. You pull down the trigger, shoots out 50 rounds at a time. You release the trigger, it stops, or run out of ammunition. That's no more simple than that. And the left always tries to say, that stock makes it more lethal. No, it's an accessory. It doesn't mean it's a trigger. It's all about the mechanics of the gun. If it's an accessory, does it make the gun a higher rate of shooting? Sure. Is it going to make it fire more than one at a time? No, then it's not a, a machine gun. Case in point. They just want this as a way to ban all guns. Get it through your heads yet? They don't like guns. The primary differences between the two, the primary reason for machine guns so heavily restricted is that machine guns have a much faster rate of fire. That's a practical practicality. That's why they're restricted. More importantly, Congress doesn't include rate of fire as a factor when determining if it's a machine gun, and they focus on the internal mechanics. But enter the bump stock. Now, it's an aftermarket device that can be attached to any commonly owned semi-automatic rifle platform. They don't have to be, they don't change the mechanics of the gun. One pull of the trigger will cause only one bullet to come out. The device enables shooters through a combination of physics and technique and to pull the trigger much more rapidly than most shooters are capable of absent the device. So without the device, the recoil, you still have to kind of adjust, readjust and, and multiple times still have to pull it. This allows the, the, the gun to bounce in and out at a higher rate, meaning you still have to pull the trigger multiple times, but it's coming back towards you and refocus the recoil rather than going back through your shoulder. Between 2010, and 2008, we spent more than 100 million estimated uh, 500,000 bump stocks, and these were completely lawful. Well, the last 15 different occasions, the ATF has determined at this eight-year period, eight period that the addition of the bump stock didn't turn a semi weapon into a legal machine gun, even though it has greatly increases the rate of fire. Again, that's, it, doesn't change, it doesn't change the mechanics. But in 2017, it all changed. Because of a high-profile mass shooting, oh my God, guns are bad. They decide that bump stocks turn it into machine guns because every mass shooting, you have to pan guns. So any device attached to it makes it makes shoot more. You, you can put a hole through somebody. Depends on the bullet. Again, these people are downright dumbasses. The, the, the high-profile shooting that they're talking about, they have this band, it still used a semi-automatic gun. It may have had a bump stock attached, but it still didn't change the premise of the gun. It was still a semi-automatic rifle. That's the only ones they're allowed to use, civilian-wise. So any of us that purchased bump stocks were now re required to destroy the device or render it surrender to the ATF without receiving any kind of compensation. So Cargill, one of many law-abiding Americans, um, basically sued the ATF. And he sued whether or not bump stocks plainly just don't fall under the definition of machine gun. It's not a gun. It's an accessory. It's a completely different argument. And so Supreme Court vindicated Cargill through countless and other countless gun owners. The ATF was bad for all intents and purposes, unilaterally deciding that felons are illegally possessing machine guns overnight. If you had a bump stock, bam, gone, felon. Um, but it doesn't mean the fight's over. It just means that the United States Supreme Court said, no, it's not a machine gun. And it doesn't make it a machine gun just because you put an accessory on it. So that's what's important to remember, too. All right. So that's all I got for news this week. Um, I shared some funny videos. As a reminder, uh, we're heading up on the, a little bit over an hour and 15. That's fine. I have a lot of new stuff to catch up on. Uh, download Rumble. It's free, completely free. It helps me out. You can find my show, Ryan Max Show, my channel. I'm downloading it completely free. I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, 
uh, Twitter, X, whatever, and you can catch anywhere there. But Rumble is probably going to be what I use going forward in addition to Rumble Studio. So that is where the majority of my content will be as um, I'm throttled everywhere else, which I know I'm a small content creator, but it is what it is. Uh, so Rumble is where it's at. You download Rumble. It's free. Find my show. I'm on here and follow me every Saturday night uh, at 4. And I'll be on. And I'm also on Tuesdays and Thursdays at four with DPB on his show. Till next week. See you guys.